What's up everyone? I'm Carmine and you're watching Super Carmio. The day is finally here and we have all of the parts necessary to complete the assembly of our bridge port going into the FD RX-7. We have a ton of topics to cover including checking the end plate of the motor, uh, installing all the front stack components as well as the front cover itself and the oil pan. Um, so a lot of work ahead of us, so let's get started. All right, so here's the bridge port ready for its final assembly. Um, as you can see, I have it mounted to an engine stand in a vertical position. So you want the front facing up and I'll explain why that's important in a little bit. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is actually check the end play. Um, and what that is, is basically how much float there is on the centric shaft. And the reason you want end play is just because when parts start to expand as they heat up, um, you want to have some room for that uh, so that your bearings don't get chewed up. So uh, it's very important to check the end play and I'm going to go through that in a very detailed manner so that you can do the same if you're finishing the assembly on your uh, rotary. Alright so before we get started I'm just going to walk through all of the parts and tools we'll be using. So right here we have our two Torrington also known as needle bearings. We have a spacer that adjusts the end play so these come in different sizes depending on the end play you're trying to set. We have our front eccentric shaft bolt as well as a new o-ring to go on this bolt. We have a solid thermal pellet so from the factory um, there's a thermal pellet that goes inside of this uh, bolt and basically it's to regulate oil flow depending on the temperature. Um, we're going to delete that with this right here and basically have oil flowing through the shaft at all times. Um, we have a dowel pin from the motor and this will come in handy, I'll show you guys soon. Um, we have a new baron plate, a woodruff key, a thrust plate. This is the oil pump drive gear, OMP drive. This is the front main pulley boss. Then we have our counterweight, as well as a new oil pump and gear. Then we have some Right Stuff sealant, uh, sorted torque wrenches and wrenches, um, Vaseline, as well as blue Loctite and assembly lube. Then we have our freshly powder coated front cover, as well as a new metal gasket for that, front cover bolts. And probably most important tool that we'll be using is this dial indicator. So this is what we're gonna use to check the end play. Another thing that I wanna note is pay attention to your motor um, in terms of what rotors and uh, counterweight you're using. So for example, um, if this was just a stock FD motor, it would have an FD size counterweight. Um, since this has FC eight and a half to one compression rotors, I actually need FC counterweight and what that means is um, all of the bearing plates um, as well as the bearings and washers are sized differently than the FD ones so they are slightly smaller in diameter. So just keep in mind that you're going to want to pay attention to your motor and uh, what bearings and so forth that it uses. Alright the first thing that we're going to do is install our thrust washer. Um, as you could tell there is a taper right here so it's called a chamfer and um, one side has it and the other side is flat. So what you're going to want to do is put the flat side up or the chamfer facing down. Um, but before we slide it over, I'm just going to put a glob of Vaseline on it. So even though we're just checking the end plate and this isn't going to be the final assembly, we do want to get everything lubricated. We don't want to rotate anything um, with dry bearings and so forth. So after that, we're just going to make sure we have the correct direction. We're going to slide this over the shaft and put it down. Then we'll take one of our needle bearings, Torrington bearings, put some assembly lube on this side. Now the direction of this doesn't matter. Um, and then we'll put it down on top. Put a little bit more lube. Now this next step is very, very important. Here's the spacer that's going to basically dictate the end play. And one thing that's very important to know is your needle bearings are going to want to rest on the outside of it. So they're basically going to sit on the outside di diameter of this spacer. Now one thing you'll know if you ever read forums is the fact that if you're removing your front shaft bolt and the engine is still in the car, so the motor would be horizontal, 
this needle bearing can easily slip off and basically fall inside of the spacer like that. So the bad thing about that is if you retorque that front shaft bolt, it'll basically crush this bearing. So it's very important during this installation that you make sure that your needle bearings are right in on the outside of this spacer. So I'm just gonna put a little lube on this and then slide this over and then make sure that my bearing is on the outside. And a quick way to tell is you can spin it and you should feel it right in on the outside of this spacer. Okay, now we're gonna remove this 12 millimeter bolt that we had that was holding the stationary gear in place, just for safety purposes. And we'll install our bearing plate. And this has two holes that correlate to these dowels right here, so you could only really put it on one way. And before we put it on, I'm just gonna put a little lube on it. So now we'll locate this on the dowel pins and also make sure that the spacer is inside. All right, then we'll put on our six bolts. I'm just gonna hand tighten these. All right, now I'm gonna torque these bolts down in sequence. Another thing is I usually torque things in stages, so these need to be torqued down at 12 and a half foot pounds. I'm gonna use inch pounds, so that's 150. So I'm gonna start by torquing these to 100 inch pounds. Now I'm just gonna do a crisscross pattern on this. All right, now I'm gonna torque these at 150 inch pounds. Now I'm gonna get my next needle of Torrenton bearing. I'm gonna put this on top and I'm gonna make sure that it's outside of that spacer. So as you could see, I could spin it, so that's good. Now we have our counterweight right here. And as I said before, this is an FC counterweight to match the FC rotors. And there is a flat washer that's gonna go inside this groove. Um, so we're gonna wanna lubricate that as well. And then we're gonna slide this down. Now we're gonna lube this up and put the oil drive gear down. We're gonna have the gear facing down, followed by our OMP gear. Now we'll put our Woodruff key on. This will keep everything set. Then we'll get our front pulley boss. Slide that in as well. And then we'll put some Vaseline on our bolt right here. Install this bolt. All right, now we're gonna to torque this bolt to 80 foot-pounds. And at some point, this whole stack is gonna start spinning and I'll show you how to take care of that. So we'll take one of our dowel pins and just place it right here so that this counterweight won't be able to spin once it hits it, like so. Okay, it's now torqued. All right, with the motor on its side, first thing that you could check is that you have an audible noise. You'll hear a little clinking noise. Um, if you basically pull and push from the rear, counterweight and what you're hearing is that end play. So if you hear a clinking that's good. Alright so we'll get our magnetic dial indicator and we'll attach the base to the oil pump flange and then we'll loosen the flex wire and put the pin right on the centric shaft bolt and we'll Tighten this so it doesn't move. And then we'll pull our pin out. Let it rest in the middle. After we have our dial indicator attached, what we're gonna do is just center the gauge so that it is marked at zero. And then what we're gonna do is pull the whole shaft and everything to the rear. So from the rear counterweight, we're gonna pull back and then push forward. And what's gonna happen is this dial indicator 
needle right here is going to get pushed and we're going to basically measure the amount that it's traveling in thousandths of an inch. So as you guys could see, uh, we're basically going about two and a half ticks, which is about 0 0.0025 inches. Um, the spec is 0 0.0016 inches to 0 0.0028 inches or 0 0.04 millimeters to 0 0.07 millimeters. Um, so we are in range. So this is good to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is take this all apart and assemble it for real since we know our end plate is good. Another thing you could do right now um, that's pretty cool is you could actually hear uh, your compression. So if you spin this, you can actually hear air being ingested and expelled. And if you look in the exhaust ports, you can actually see the rotor spinning past. But anyways, to start taking this apart. Next thing I'm going to do is put just a very light coat of the right stuff on the oil pump mounting surface. Then we'll take our new oil pump and pack it nicely with some Vaseline. And make sure to clean up your surface nicely. I use some brake cleaner. And I'm also going to put a little bit more assembly lube inside of the passages. And we'll drop our oil pump on. Make sure it does not come apart as you do this. All right, then I'm gonna put a little bit of red Loctite on these. And I can throw them in first. And then we'll torque these 10 mil bolts to 84 inch pounds. And we'll restack everything like we did before with lots of lube. Um, again, you want this chamfer facing down on this thrust plate. Slide that down. Then we'll put our needle bearing, a little bit more lube. Then we'll put our spacer. Again, make sure that this spacer is bottomed out and that this needle bearing is riding on the outside of it. You don't want this to go underneath. That should be good. Then we'll put our bearing plate on here and then use the locating bowel pins then I'm going to put some blue Loctite on these bearing plate bolts and hand thread these in all right first I'm going to torque these to 100 inch pounds and then 150 inch pounds then we'll put on the next needle bearing Again, you're going to want to make sure it slides on the outside of this washer. Then we'll make sure we have our washer inside of our counterweight. Slide that down. Next, I'm going to use a little Vaseline to hold this oil pump Woodruff key in place. Make sure that does not drop off when you're installing the gear and sprocket. You're gonna install these together, so it's gonna be a little tricky since you have to line up this one as well as this one at the same time. And I'm just gonna put my Woodruff key in. And then I'm gonna double check that that Woodruff key for the oil pump did not fall out. And I'll just put my OMP drive back on. And I'm going to put my lock washer and some red Loctite on the threads. Then we'll tighten down this 17 mil oil pump nut and we'll torque that to 35 foot pounds. Now we'll hammer the lock washer in place. Now you're going to want to clean off the whole area where the front cover gasket is going to go. Then I'm going to put a thin layer of the right stuff along the gasket area. And I'm going to put on the metal front cover gasket. 
using the dowel pins to align it. Then we'll drop on our front cover. We'll drop in our new front cover seal. You want the spring facing to the inside. And Atkins does say to not install this with any type of grease or anything like that. So I'm just gonna see if I could press it in. And you just want this flush. All right, then we'll install our front cover bolts. And keep in mind these bolts are different lengths. So you wanna test them out to make sure you're throwing them into the right hole. And I'm gonna torque these to 17 foot-pounds. And I'll put on my front pulley boss. Next, I'm gonna change out this O-ring that's on the front cover bolt. I'm just gonna put some assembly lube in here. And install the new O-ring. And then I'm gonna install my spring, followed by the solid thermal pellet replacement. And it's the way that it goes is this narrow end goes in this bolt. And this has a little seat for the spring. So now I'm gonna install the bolt. The top half of the threads I'm gonna put sealant, so I'm gonna use some right stuff. And then the bottom half I'm gonna use some blue Loctite. All right, so now we're gonna have to torque that front Centric shaft bolt to 190 foot pounds, and that's going to require us to lock the flywheel. Um, a quick and easy, and most likely free trick you could do if you have a box wrench is just to attach one end to the counterweight and the other end to one of the transmission housing, bell housing bolts. All right, now I'm going to rotate the motor again. And we're just going to double check the end play one last time. All right, guys, our front cover is installed with the, our front cover bolt torqued down. Everything is good to go on this end. End play is in spec. Now we just have to install our oil pan. So what we're going to want to do now is thoroughly clean the surface where the oil pan is going to mount to the motor. I've already cleaned the oil pan um, and also scuffed it up a little bit, but now I'm going to do the same to the motor. Um, so this needs to be thoroughly cleaned. Um, we do not want to have to take the oil pan back off because it's leaking. With our surface clean, the next thing we're going to do is clean out the threads that the oil pan bolts are going to go into. And what I'm going to use is an M6 by one tap and just slowly go into all of these holes and clean up the threads. Um, get rid of any prior RTV and stuff like that. All right, now with the three millimeter Allen wrench, we're gonna thread in all of our studs. All right guys, well as you can see, I did run into a little bit of a snag right here. Um, when I was trying to thread in those new studs, I did discover that these two holes were stripped out. So if this happens to you, don't panic. What you could do is slightly enlarge the hole um, and then re-tap it to M8 by 1.25, um, which is roughly the size up uh, from the M6 by one. All right, next I'm gonna install this oil pickup tube. So I have a gasket here. And then for the bolts, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of uh, red Loctite on them. Then I'll torque these two bolts to 85 inch pounds. With the pickup installed, now I'm gonna get the oil pan sealant installed. So what I wanna do is run a four to six millimeter bead around all of the studs and the motor mounts. Um, I am using Honda Bond, because I've heard that's the best. Um, especially since rotaries do tend to mix some fuel inside of the oil. So uh, that seems to be the most resistant to that. Okay, and then within five minutes, you're gonna wanna start tying in this down. So I'm just gonna thread in all the oil pan bolts by hand. But before you do that, you're gonna wanna put your brace down if you have one. All right, now I'm gonna tighten these all down. I'm gonna do it in stages. The final torque set is gonna be 100 inch pounds. Um, I'm gonna start at 50. 
All right, next I'm gonna step up to 70 inch pounds. Do the same crisscross. And then finally, we'll do our final torque of 100 inch pounds. Then we'll install our motor mounts. These are 19 millimeter bolts that come with the bonsai kit. All right, these bolts get torqued down to 65 foot pounds, but again, I'm gonna do this in stages. I'm gonna start with 35. So I'll go up to 50 pounds. And finally, I'll torque them down to 65 foot pounds. All right guys, well we've made it. We have our short block with the front cover, all of the front stack components. We also have our oil pan, the oil pan brace, motor mounts. This thing is good to go. All that's left is to install all the accessories and as well as the turbo and all those components. But uh, we're in a really good place and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Where we'll tackle all the rest of those components. Here's a preview of what's to come. We have all of the rest of the components going on the motor. We have our UIM, LIM, oil filler, throttle body elbow, and our compressor cover, all freshly powder coated. All right guys, well that's gonna be a wrap for this episode. Thanks for bearing with me as we very carefully and precisely installed all of the front cover components as well as check end plate and got that oil pan installed. We had to figure out some issues, especially with the oil pan. Um, hopefully you guys don't come across that, but if so, don't panic. Um, as you can see, everything is pretty much resolvable. Um, I hope you found this video educational as well as entertaining. Smash that like button if so. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.